Jeff McNair wins the award for coming the longest distance probably today, all the way from Southern California, where he's the director of public policy at the Public Policy Center uh, for Johnny and Friends Christian Institute on Disability. He's also a faculty member at California Baptist University, where he oversees a master's degree in disability studies program. It's a very innovative, unique uh, project, and it's a collaborative effort with the Christian Institute on Disability. He's been a professor of special education for more than 20 years, served as a president for the National Association of Christians in Special Education, and for the Religion and Spiritualities Division of the American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. He lives out what he talks about. He and his wife, Kathy, have been involved in ministry involving people with intellectual disabilities for more than 30 years. Uh, join me in welcoming Jeff. You know, integrated environments uh, only seem unusual to those who've not yet experienced them, right? If you've experienced an integrated environment, you recognize immediately this is the way things are supposed to be. From, I wanna talk to you a little bit about integrated environments and what they would look like though from a Christian perspective. From a Christian perspective, our starting point is that you are complete in Christ. Colossians 2.10 says that, independent of what your personal characteristics are, you are complete in Christ. That is my starting point. And because you are complete in Christ, it also tells me in 1 Corinthians 12 that you are an integral part of the body. It literally says, I cannot live without you. That's the starting point. That's what drives us to have an integrated environment, not just some syrupy feeling of we all should live together. It's a command of the scriptures from a Christian perspective. When we enter into trying to create these environments, a critical thing that we try to determine is what is relevant and what is not relevant. And oftentimes the reasons people are excluded are things that are not relevant are made relevant. And so we determine what is relevant, we address the things that are relevant, and then we leave the things alone that are not relevant. But one of the hardest parts about this, and the thing that gets in the way more than anything else, <coughs> is that we have to change, right? And we don't want to change. <laughs> and so like, I mean, your church out here at some point, I mean, maybe it was built with ramps. At some point somebody came in and said, you know what? You need to have ramps here so that people can have access to this building. And maybe people didn't want to have that change of ramps, but they made the change and now the building is different than it was before, right? Well, the thing I hate to break to you <coughs> is that you need to change. If integration is going to happen in your church or in any situation, it's not, isn't it great we're going to have this room over here? No, it means you need to change. You need to change in the way that you do things. Um, it, it's interesting, there's a passage that I ride like a rented mule in uh, scriptures. It's, it's called Mark, it's Mark 7, 8. And it says, um, we exchange, Jesus is criticizing the scribes and Pharisees, and he says, you exchange the commands of God for the traditions of men. And a lot of the reasons why we don't want to change, to do things that would facilitate integration for people with disabilities, is because they step on the toes of our traditions. And when they step on the toes of our traditions, we'd say, well, we'd rather keep our traditions than obey the commands of God, which would imply the changes that have to come in us such that people who are devalued and excluded can become a part of the Christian church or whatever your, your faith community might be. We have to change. Now, in order to facilitate this change, we've come up with an idea that we call social ramps. And that is that there's ways in which we have to change the community such that we build ramps into that community. Right? There's an article that you can get for free if you search social ramps on Google, you can find the article. But the idea is, first of all, I prepare you and I say to you, um, we are going to start having people with autism in this congregation during this service. So the person with autism shows up and you're saying, what the heck is that? It's kind of like, no, I knew that person was coming, they told me that. And then we're going to say to you, you know what, let me tell you what the life of a person or a family of a person with autism is like in terms of exclusion, in terms of some of the challenges that they face. And that's going to soften your heart a little bit and make it a little easier to have the person with autism, you know, potentially engaging in autistic behaviors. And then the thing we're going to do is we're going to help you. We're going to coach you and say, this is a good thing that you can do to help that family. You know that thing you did? That probably wasn't so good. Don't do that anymore, right? So <laughs> we're going to coach you to try to help you. Ultimately, what these environments look like uh, my church is moving in the right direction. We're not there yet. We've only been at it for 20 years, though. So we, we give us a few more years, and maybe we'll get there. <laughs> but the thing that you find is that environments become unexpected and fresh. 
right? Those of you who have been around people with potentially intellectual disabilities or autism, you recognize there's an unpredictability there. Now, the unpredictability there can be taken on one level to be yeesh, or on the other hand, it can tell, this is kind of fun. It's going to be a little different this week in church. It's not going to be the same thing that we do every time. So it becomes fun and welcoming. And another thing, one last thing about this is that if I start, if I start accepting people who, are, who I can visually see have a characteristic that would cause them to be devalued and excluded, then all of a sudden I show up with my hidden addiction or my hidden disability, and I look at that and say, if they accept those people, then maybe they'll accept me too, right? So ultimately, an integrated church, an integrated congregation is a place where integration and diversity is not even noted. We're just so used to it, we're not even noted. It's just a place where it's assumed. And the thing that happens when we don't see it, now we start getting righteously angry. 